From a distance, Ochred looks like it's changed little over the centuries. A fairy tale, faraway place. Ringed by snow capped peaks, reflected in an ancient lake that lies beneath it. 5,000 years of civilization, almost two millennia of Christianity. Erasmus, who came from Antioch, from Syria, uh, chose this place to build his church and uh, he built a basilica. Uh, and this was the first church here? One of the first churches, Christian churches of Europe, uh, because uh, imagine uh, Saint uh, Erasmus died in 303, which is 10 years before Christianity was even recognized by the Roman state. Saint Erasmus's church was just the beginning. Legend has it there are 365 churches and monasteries in and around Ocrid. This one, St. Sophia's, is on the country's thousand dinar banknote. And the city itself for centuries was known as the Jerusalem of the Balkans. We don't have enough stones, yeah. so they were yeah. recycling well, older stones. Lyubcho Kumbarovsky is a local historian. We actually have uh, stones. It's a nice round number, uh, 365, uh, just like uh, the days uh, of the year. But, and but why, why, why so many in one place? Uh, it is a, a place next to a large lake, lots of uh, drinkable water, lots of food, uh, well protected, and it is on the crossroads. Uh, of uh, uh, the roads uh, connecting east and west, uh, uh, north and south. And at almost every turn, it does feel like there's a church. St. Barbara's, patron saint of miners and carpenters, 19th century. And over there, 17th century, a church for the holy doctors Cosma and Damien. But it is when you go inside that the churches reveal their beauty. Some frescoes are 900 years old. We are fortunate to have some of the oldest frescoes uh, known to uh, the Christian world here in this church, uh, including some beautiful angels that are considered to be the most beautiful and the most serious angels ever painted. The city is also the birthplace of the Cyrillic script taught by St. Clement at the university he founded here 1,100 years ago. From the winding alleys of the old town to the myriad archaeological digs, Ocrid's past can be seen laid layer upon layer. But nowhere is the arc of history more stunningly revealed than from the lake. Our boatman, Bobby, named after the great English footballer Bobby Moore, is more than happy to show us and make us coffee. Yeah. You want uh, with sugar, without sugar, little sugar? Medium. Medium. I think, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. He is, by nature, a happy man. No problem. Is, don't worry. Be happy. But he is not delighted by the decline in tourism. When we were in Yugoslavia, a lot of tourists came from Netherlands, Deutschland, and from other countries from Europe. But now. From everywhere again. From the world? Yes, but not a lot like before. Both the lake, also called Ochred, and the city are getting some attention. New laws passed by the Macedonian government are designed to protect it, bolstering safeguards in place since it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1980. But to have a future, it needs more than protecting. It needs people. Do you think people have forgotten your country, Macedonia? They knew Yugoslavia, but have they forgotten Macedonia? Yes. 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 Why did they forget you? I don't know why. Because maybe we're a small country, who knows? Two million people, well, like one state in Europe. <laughs> a small country, but one with a rich and deep history. Nick Robertson, CNN, Ochred, Macedonia.